Hello friends, this video is on ulna and in this we will learn about the parts of ulna, its side determination and the muscles attached on the ulna. Now ulna is the bone of the forearm and it is the medial bone of the forearm, the lateral one is the radius. Which type of bone is ulna? It is a long bone and therefore like any other long bone it has got three parts and these are the upper end the lower end and the intervening shaft how to determine the side of the ulna for this you have to keep three points in mind first is the upper end is hook like with the concavity directed anteriorly or forwards this concave surface is known as trochlear notch the second point is when we look at the lower end we find there is a round head and there is a pointed bony process which is known as styloid process. This styloid process is posterior medial to the rounded head. So this is the second point. And the third point is that the sharpest border of the ulna is the lateral border or the introsious border. So keeping these three points in mind, this ulna belongs to left side. Let us look at the features of upper end of ulna. So upper end of ulna has got two processes and has got two notches. So the two processes, the first one is the olecranon process. This is the upward extension from the shaft which we can see in this anterior view, lateral view and the posterior view. Now olecranon process has got five surfaces and these five surfaces are, this is the anterior surface which forms the upper part of trochlear notch. Then we have the posterior surface. We can see here the triangular area here. This is the posterior surface. And then we have, this is subcutaneous also, the posterior surface. Then we have a superior surface. Superior surface, the anterior part is smooth and the posterior part here is a rough area. This is going to provide attachment to a muscle and the anterior part will be related to a bursa. Then we have the next surface is the lateral surface which we can see here. This is the lateral surface. This is the lateral surface. And the fifth surface is the medial surface. So olecranon process has got five surfaces anterior, posterior, superior, lateral and medial. The second process is coronoid process. This is actually the forward extension of the shaft at the upper end. So we can see here, here this triangular shaped anterior process which is known as coronoid process and this also has got four surfaces. The surfaces are, this is the anterior surface which is rough because of muscle attachments here. Then we have the superior surface. This is the superior surface. This is forming the lower part of the trochlear notch along with anterior surface of olecranon process. And then we have the medial surface which cannot be seen here. This will on this side will be the medial surface. And here we have the lateral surface. In the lateral surface, on the lateral surface, in the upper part, we have a notch, right? This is the radial notch. And the lower part, there is a depressed area which is bounded posteriorly by a crest. Now, let us look at the notches. So there are two notches. Let us look at those two notches, which are those. First is the trochlear notch, which we can appreciate here very clearly. So trochlear notch, this is formed by anterior surface of olecranon process and superior surface of the coronoid process. The second notch which is present on the lateral aspect of the uh, coronoid process, this is radial notch. This will articulate with the head of the radius, right? And the trochlear notch is going to articulate with the trochlea of the humerus. Two other points which I would like to mention here. First is ulna chibrosity. At the lower end of the anterior aspect of the coronoid process, we have a raised bony prominence and this is known as ulnar chibrosity. And the second is, as I told you earlier, just below the radial notch, we have here a depressed area which is bounded posteriorly by supinator crest. As the name suggests, supinator muscle will be taking origin from this crest here. So what are the joints formed by the ulna? In total, it forms four joints. One is the elbow joint and the three are the radio ulna joints, right? So here we can see it is participating in the formation of the elbow joint. Elbow joint is formed between uh, the lower end of the humerus and upper ends of radius and ulna. 
so here we can see at the upper end this is the trochlea of the humerus which is articulating with the trochlear notch of the ulna the three radio ulna joints these are the superior radio ulna joint which is between the head of the radius and the radial notch on the lateral uh, surface of the uh, upper end of ulna and along with the annular ligament right so a ring is formed and within that the head of the radius is held so this is a pivot type of joint the second is the intermediate radio ulna joint uh, here the two bones that is the ulna and the radius they are connected via a membranous or fibrous structure known as interosseous membrane so this is the fibrous joint or we also call it syndesmosis this is the only fibrous joint in the upper limb and third is the inferior radio ulna joint this is between the head of the ulna and the ulna notch on the lower end of the radius this is also a pivot joint coming to borders and surfaces of shaft of ulna like any other long bone this will also have three borders and three surfaces so let us first look at the borders the borders are first is the anterior border this starts from the ulna tuberosity and it is rounded border and then it turns posteriorly and reaches the styloid process the second border is the interosseous or the lateral border this is the sharpest border of the ulna which can be seen here and the third border is the posterior border so it starts from this triangular area which is subcutaneous of the olecranon process from there it is going to begin and this will also reach the styloid process so this is the posterior border the three surfaces are this is anterior surface between the anterior border and the interosseous border and we can see here there is a foramen known as nutrient foramen and the direction of the nutrient foramen is upwards that means the growing end of the ulna is the lower end then we have the posterior surface the posterior surface actually is continuous with the lateral surface of the olecranon process so you can see here this is present between interosseous border and the posterior border so this surface is the posterior surface and the third surface is the medial surface remember radial had lateral surface because it is a lateral bone and ulnar will have medial surface because this is a medial bone so this is the medial surface which can be seen here uh, on more on the posterior aspect it is turned slightly uh, towards the medial side so this is between the posterior border and the anterior border so between anterior and posterior border we have the medial surface let us now consider the muscles attached on the ulna so first we will consider those muscles which are inserted on the ulna and these muscles are three in number and they will be all inserted on the upper end of the ulna remember upper end of the ulna has got two processes coronoid process and olecranon process let us look at these muscles now the first muscle is the brachialis which is inserted on the anterior surface of the coronoid process so it is simple to remember because brachialis muscle belongs to flexor compartment or anterior compartment of the arm so that's why it will be inserted on the anterior process that is coronoid process and its anterior surface so second muscle that we will see here is the triceps the triceps belongs to extensor or posterior compartment of the arm and that's why it is inserted on the posterior process of the ulna that is the olecranon process here we can see the triceps is inserted on the posterior part of the superior surface here it is very obvious posterior part of the superior surface of olecranon process the anterior part of the superior surface that is related to a bursa which separates it from the tendon of triceps second muscle also belongs to the extensor compartment of the arm that is enconius and this is inserted on lateral surface of the olecranon process now let us look at the muscles which will be taking origin from the ulna there are in total eight muscles one is supinator two are pronators three are for the fingers and two are for thumb so let us first see the supinator muscle the supinator muscle is take that takes origin from the lateral surface of the coronoid process which can be seen here and from the uh, supinator crest so in this lateral view it becomes very clear 
this is the radial notch right and here we have a depressed area just below that which is bounded posteriorly by the supinator crest so supinator crest and the depressed area they will that will give origin to supinator how you can remember it because supinator will take origin from ulna and will be inserted on the radius so it has to be present on the lateral side second we have two pronators the two protein pronators are pronator teres and pronator quadratus pronator teres is present above and the pronator quadratus is present it is a quadrilateral muscle which is present in the lower part of the fora so pronator teres that will take origin from the medial aspect of the anterior surface of coronoid process it has got actually two heads one is the humeral head this is the ulnar head then we have pronator quadratus pronator quadratus will take origin from the lower 1/4 of the ulna from its anterior surface so sorry from the anterior surface of lower 1/4 of the ulna this is inserted onto the lower 1/4 of anterior surface of radius next let us see the three uh, four fingers so first we will consider two muscles on the flexor compartment right in the flexor compartment of the forearm so they will be obviously taking origin from the anterior aspect of the ulna and the two flexor muscles long flexors of digits these are flexor digitorum superficialis this is flexor digitorum superficialis again just above the pronator teres from the medial side of the anterior surface of the coronoid process this will take origin it also takes origin from the anterior oblique line of radius second muscle which is a big muscle that takes origin from the upper 3/4 of the anterior surface of ulna and not only from here but also from the medial surface of the ulna and this muscle is flexor digitorum profundus so from anterior surface upper 3/4 as well as from the medial surface of the ulna so these are the two flexor muscles of the digits now let us look at two muscles of the thumb so now we reach this is the posterior surface right so abductor muscle extensors muscles all these names they will be in the extensor compartment of the forearm so they will take origin from posterior surface of the ulna so first muscle is abductor pollicis longus this also takes origin from the radius and interosseous membrane second is the extensor pollicis longus right in case of radius it is abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis here it is abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis longus both are longus muscles here and the third muscle belongs to the index finger and this is extensor indices this muscle will take origin from the lower most part of the posterior surface of the ulna what about now extensor digitorum and extensor digiti minimi they are not taking origin either from ulna or from radius they are taking origin from the common extensor origin from the lateral epicondyle of humerus that's why they are not taking origin from ulna or from radius so that's all for this so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want Uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again